one of the all-time great industries uh, for utilizing captive insurance companies is the auto finance industry. Um, and the reasons for this are, are twofold. One, there are a number of insurance products that are essential to the operation of a, a sound, well-managed auto finance company. Um, and what, what these companies are essentially doing is, um, and when I say auto finance, um, I'm mainly focused on the subprime marketplace. So this is CD, poor credit borrowers, um, you know, who can't get conventional financing from their, you know, their bank down the street. Okay. So these are, again, people with, um, you know, poor or no credit that need to seek alternative forms of lending to, you know, get their automobile purchased. So what these finance companies do is provide a loan um, outlet really for, you know, used cars buyer, used car buyers, right? And so they're typically loaning at a higher interest rate, oftentimes 15 to, to 20% to offset the risk of, you know, loaning to people with poor credit. Um, and so when you're operating in this marketplace, there's uh, different risk factors than if you're just, you know, again, loaning to somebody with 800 credit at a, you know, at a 2% clip. Um, and a couple of these are really, you know, really obvious, but the first one is, you know, everybody who drives a car in California is required to have statutory auto coverage, um, liability, uh, you know, and then, you know, property coverage. And this does a couple things. One, protects the general public at large from, you know, reckless driving. It also protects the lender in the event that the car becomes damaged because then the insurance company is, is you know, paying, you know, the, the payoff balance for the car, um, you know, the, that this lender has extended a loan for. Um, but what happens a lot in this subprime space is these borrowers, they just, you know, they either forget to buy the coverage, um, don't want to pay for the coverage, um, you know, for whatever reason, they fail to secure this, you know, their, their traditional automobile insurance coverage. And so what has developed is what's called collateral protection insurance. And so when a borrower fails to, you know, obtain their standard coverage, these lenders will come in and, and essentially obligate or, or force the borrower to pay for this coverage that will respond in the event the borrower wrecks the car and essentially crushes the collateral that was securing this loan. And in the event that that happens, the collateral protection insurance pays and the lender is, is made whole. Um, and the other concept is that of the gap insurance. So uh, automobile companies, it's the old thing, right? You, you go, you buy a car and the moment you drive it off the lot, it's worse, it's worth less than you bought it for, right? Um, and, and that's certainly the case here. So a lot of times these lenders, they're lending out you know, more money for these, these automobile loans than the collateral or the car is actually worth. And then, so you have this, this gap there and under normal circumstances, you know, Hey, no big deal. But again, in these, in these subprime scenarios, you've got this, you know, you've got this exposure that if the car gets wrecked and even if they have auto coverage, that's going to you know pay for the value of the car, there's still going to be this gap there that you know this borrower is unlikely to be able to afford. You can hold them liable for it. You can say, oh yeah, you know, you owe me three thousand, four thousand dollars for the difference between you know what the insurance paid and what the loan amount is. But good luck collecting it if you know if this person um, is is tight on money or you know again is not is not a good credit risk. So one of the insurance policies that exists out there is is gap insurance, um, essentially to cover the gap between the, you know, the collateral and the actual loan amount. Um, those are the main two. Uh, a third coverage referred to as skip insurance, uh, which is li literally the person skipping town with the car, theft of the automobile. You're, they're not going to pay you. They've taken the collateral and they're gone, right? Um, so really three coverages there that are fundamental to this auto finance space. Um, and again, a well-managed risk management program for, for finance companies. Um, and if you get into this space and you don't know what you're doing, you don't buy the proper coverages, you can get your hat handed to you. Um, however, for well-run auto finance companies that have good controls, good underwriting, each of these lines of coverage can be very profitable. So 
really, really lends itself towards, you know, the establishment of a captive insurance company to insure or reinsure those risks. Um, because I mean, this is almost quintessential definition of, you know, why you would want to do a captive, right? You're doing your risk management better than the traditional market, better than the average Joe, and you deserve to recoup or reap the benefits of that good risk management. And so the captive gives you the, the facility or the vessel to do that while still being compliant with the state laws associated with, you know, selling these policies to, to consumers. So um, great, great space. Um, we've seen increased activity here because, um, you know, the used car market has been hot lately. So there's, uh, you know, I mean, you know, if you pay attention to the news, um, you know, the value of used cars is actually up. That's because demand is there. People want to, you know, buy, um, need to get into autos. And so we've seen a lot of activity in the auto finance space. And then, so there's a big renewed push uh, to set up captives to support this, support this volume. So, um, you know, again, really historically exciting space um, with that's seeing a little renaissance here. Um, and so I thought it was really good to do this case study and, and have this information out there for folks.